Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, the PTA mom. She tried to kill you? She was following me. She seemed unhinged. She's nuts. All the stuff she said I was doing to her, she was doing to me. And the schoolyard setup. You were accused of planting drugs in this woman's car, did you? No. But they did find your DNA on the pills. A husband's shocking 911 call. I saw a car driving very erratically. Ken Easter disguised his voice and called police. My car is surrounded by police. I could see a big, giant bag of marijuana sitting on the back seat. My knees had buckled when I saw the drugs. For the first time... What's wrong with this woman? Is she evil? Oh, for sure. You'll hear both sides. It's going to be very shocking. There's a lot more to the story that people don't know about. In a Dr. Phil exclusive. Today, it's a story of revenge, drugs, and threats. A vendetta so deep it lasted for over a year. But you may be surprised to hear this feud wasn't between two bad guy criminals. Nope, it was between these two glamorous, blonde, Orange County moms. What started as a schoolyard spat spiraled into an unbelievable drama. High-powered attorney Jill Easter and her Ivy League-educated husband Kent, also an attorney, were arrested for framing Kelly Peters the PTA president at their son's elementary school. They were accused of hatching a devious plot to have Kelly arrested by stashing drugs in her car. This mom versus mom playground drama had everyone talking. An apparent case of revenge has landed an Irvine couple in jail. Police say the husband and wife planted drugs in a school volunteer's car. Kelly Peters found herself the target of a diabolical frame-up to destroy her reputation by this married couple, Jill and Kent Easter. Her ordeal started over something ridiculously minor. The Easters were allegedly upset over a minor issue involving their son. Jill Easter was late to pick him up after school and began hurling accusations at staff. I said he might have just been slow to line up. Do you think that mom thought you were calling her son slow? Well, I found out the hard way that that's what she thought. They tried to bring her to court. They tried to accuse her of stalking. In the end, they decided that they were going to plant some drugs and accuse her of being drugged out and get her thrown out of the PTA, thrown out of the school. I mean, it's just been nonstop harassment. Kent Easter is the one alleged to have put the drugs in Peter's car and who called police to have her arrested. I'm concerned one of the, the parent volunteers there may be uh, under the influence or in, uh, using drugs. Police found a crack pipe, prescription drugs, and marijuana behind the seat of Kelly's car. Opening statements got underway today in the trial of a local attorney. He's accused of plotting to frame a PTA volunteer at his son's school. The DA says Kent Easter's DNA is all over the drugs and cell phone records show his Blackberry was near the victim's vehicle in the middle of the night. The defense claims, however, Jill Easter had her husband's phone, and the blame is squarely on her shoulders. By the end of this trial, you're going to see that while Kent is a very good human being, he didn't have backbone when it came to his wife. She wore the pants in the family. She pushed him around. Jill Easter, who wrote a thriller about committing a perfect crime under a pen name, pled guilty and was sentenced to four months in prison. Her husband, Kent, was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. The worst nightmare you could ever not wake up from. She's been called the mom from hell. But Jill Easter says everyone has the facts all wrong. Jill, who has changed her name and is now known as Ava Everhart, is here speaking out for the first time in an exclusive interview. Kelly Peters is also here. We're talking to both moms who tell two very different tales. Tell me how this all started. Well, I think the start was seven years ago uh, when there was an incident in an after-school class. You went to pick your son up after school, right? Mm -hmm. Was he waiting there for you outside? He was not. He was locked in an area in the back of the school. And who was Kelly and why was she there? She was a compensated supervisor of the after school program. So she was monitoring the kids or responsible for them getting from A to B or whatever? Exactly. So when you ask her where your son was, what did she say? She refused to address the issue. Did you say, where's my child? Yes, I was actively searching for him. And when he was found, when I asked her to explain why the teacher had to find my son and bring him to the front, she said that my son was detained because he was slow. Did that upset you when she said he was slow? 
I don't think in any world you can blame a child that's just out of kindergarten for, yeah. you know, you not doing your job. That's, that's not a satisfactory explanation. Did you feel like he was being blamed? Absolutely. Did, did you ever imply that her son was intellectually impaired or in some way deficient? I never said that, Developmentally no. or no. in any way? No. <laughs> did, did you ever say he was slow? I said he might have been slow to line up, maybe. I, I'll, I mean, it was like in a full sentence. I said, you'll have to ask him why he didn't line up. Maybe he was just slow to line up. Slow was a word that was used, but not to describe him. Yeah, the fact slow in terms of how fast he got from right. A to B. Yeah. I mean, they have five minutes to line up. If they don't line up with me, they can come up with the tennis coach. It's just not an issue. What condition was he in when you finally got mom hands on him? Okay, well, he was crying, and he was dirty, and he was cut. I know that she says that's untrue, but I have several witnesses that say otherwise. How do you think that happened? I don't know. Huh. I've never been given a satisfactory answer. When Kelly approached him, how did he react? She reached her hand towards him, and he screamed, started crying again. What'd you make of that? Well. I knew there was something really wrong. I've never seen him act that way before. Was it specific to her? Absolutely. So he was recoiling from her? Absolutely. He, he wasn't just recoiling, he was recoiling specifically to her? Yes, he was. He's a very friendly, loving child. I've never seen him react like that. Was he cut and dirty nope, and Nope, he was and... not. That, the whole thing was a lie. She's just making some story up at this point. That's all a lie. What was his condition? I mean, when she found him, I wasn't there. And he was brought up by the tennis coach. The tennis coach told me he was fine. There was no cuts. There's no, I mean, they play on the asphalt. He might have been dirty. It's just a lie. It's, it's a lie. Totally made up. Yep. It's totally made up. Were you there to approach him in order for him to recoil from you? No. Like, I mean, she brought him up to me and he did not recoil. No, that did not happen. And did he shy away from no, you and pull back not. like, oh my God, don't, never, don't, never. don't hurt me? Or no. Just didn't happen? No, it didn't Absolute happen. Fabricated. Absolutely did, did not, not happen. happen. The fact that she's saying that is news to me. Well, what did he tell you had happened? My son has told me some private things and he would rather that I not share the story. Let's speak about it generally then. Okay. Did he tell you he had been traumatized in some way? He's told me <clears throat> what, what happened to him, and yes, it has affected him. Was he in harm's way during that time? Yes. And I, I won't ask you to violate anything about him other than you say during that time he was in harm's way and wasn't being properly supervised. Well, here's what Kelly says about that incident. I said, I'm done. This is crazy. And that made her very angry. She lost her mind over it. I turned my back and she yelled, I will get you. <laughs> I'm really glad you showed me that. I actually don't watch the media, but Kelly actually put in writing that I was extremely calm and smiling. But why would you be calm and smiling? I wouldn't have been calm and smiling if my six-year-old is missing, he's not where he's supposed to be, mm -hmm. and he's upset when he's, got, I'd be the last person on the block smiling. First of all, I have a calm nature. And second of all, when there's children around, I keep my composure. Did you threaten her? No, I did not threaten her. Yeah. And in fact, in her own report, she didn't state that I made a threat. She added that in a year afterwards. Describe the exchange. W was she, in fact, cordial, calm, smiling, pleasant? She did was she up until you? she threatened me. That, I thought, was so weird that she was so calm about it. And she came up, she said, don't you think it's odd that my son came up with the coach? And I said, no, he took a tennis lesson. It's perfectly okay. You weren't here to pick him up. He didn't line up in the back with me. And so the tennis coach brought him up. He probably helped him clean up, or he might have been slow to line up in the back. And I told her, I can't do this anymore. I have to leave. And I turned around and walked away, and she yelled at me, I will get you. How do you sleep at night? I will get you. So what happened then? I went into the office and started crying. I said, she just threatened me. And they said, don't even give it any thought. We deal with parents every single day. I said to the girls, I said, this, no, she meant this. And they said, don't even think about it. Go in there. And they were laughing. They thought it was kind of funny that I was reacting so severely. But I'd never encountered anything like that from a parent in my life. I mean, it scared me so bad. They took me into the principal's office and tried to calm me down. I had to be calmed down. So you 
told co-workers or other staff there, and then you went to the principal's office, and you told the principal. I told, yeah, well, everyone heard it and saw it, so everyone knew, yeah. Everybody that was there that day knew about this. You told everybody what had happened. I called my supervisor from, um, you know, the after-school program immediately, and I was like, you're not going to believe what happened, and I told her everything, yeah. And she said, why don't you write it down as an incident report, and just, just in case. And so I did, and I was annoyed with having to do that. I was like, I just want to go home. I was so upset. You know, it was, it was the weirdest encounter I've ever had in my life. Like, she was making uh, things up. She was making a big deal of something that didn't happen. Right. She scared me. Do you hold her responsible for not properly supervising and protecting your son? Actually, in her written report, she herself admits that she was responsible. And you agree? Yes. But for her negligence, whatever transpired with him would not have transpired. I'm not even sure it was negligence. What do you mean? I think it was purposeful. Coming up. She claims that you launched a campaign of harassment against her. Is that true? Did she file a police report against you? Yes. You told the court she tried to kill you? And I do have proof that Kelly was repeatedly showing up in private areas. What was your basis for representing to the court that she was trying to kill you? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You knew, Jason, how long before the two of you moved in together? Two weeks. He's been found guilty of sexual molestation of a boy and a girl. And you have two boys. Christina knew that there were sexual allegations against me. You had the papers from CPS. I was reading through it and just never got to the sexual allegations. You never got to that part? The molestation, you say, did not happen? No, it did not. Did you attack her in front of a mirror and choke her while she watched? I did not want to lose her. So you were trying to show her how much you... I cared. Do you understand how insane that sounds? That's tomorrow. I we now return to the Schoolyard Setup exclusive. Do you hold her responsible for not properly supervising and protecting your son? Actually, in her written report, she herself admits that she was responsible. Mm -hmm. And you agree? Yes. But for her negligence, whatever transpired with him would not have transpired. I'm not even sure it was negligence. What do you mean? I think it was purposeful. What would be her motive? She would have to answer that. All right, so you fill out an incident report. You tell the people there what happened. So what happened in the next few days? She just went after me full force. She called um, anybody that she could call. The lies started there. I mean, she just started saying anything that she could, that I hurt her son, that I drug him out back, I bloodied his knuckles, that I punished him, that I called him names, berated him. I mean, just went on and on. And she started handing out flyers in front of the school the next day. I mean, that was like the beginning of, you know, the five years of torture. And did you see her handing out the flyers? Two of my girlfriends came up and said, there's someone out front handing out flyers and they're talking about you. And n nobody knew yet what was going on from the day before because we didn't think it was, you know, going to be a big issue. And so she showed the flyer to the principal and the principal said, you don't need to see this. And she just took it from me. She goes, I'll go handle it. So I, I saw the flyer afterwards, but I didn't get handed a flyer. You eventually saw the flyer. Yeah, what I did. What was the worst thing it said? That I purposely hurt children or something. I can't remember what the flyer says. I kind of block it out of my mind. You know, she denies that she made a flyer. Oh, she does? Yeah. She claims that you launched a campaign of harassment against her. Is that true? No, and I'm glad you brought it up. There were a lot of documents that were withheld from me that I've recently gotten. One of them talks about her specific accusation that I stood on school grounds and passed out a flyer to parents. And there is actually a school record that states that on the day she reported I was doing this, she talked to the school authorities, a police officer came to the school, and the police officer reported, I wasn't even there that day. Did you ever make up a flyer? No. Whether you passed it out or not, you never made up a flyer? Never created it, and I have testified to that. I mean, the principal went up and asked her to leave, and uh, she said, I'm exercising my First Amendment right. 
Um, I'm sure there's 200 people that can swear to it that she was there. This flyer was like an open letter exactly. to all parents and mm -hmm. interested parties and all. Now she's saying, didn't she, do it, didn't happen. Yeah, what, do you, what do you think about that? She's pled guilty to creating these problems in your life. Now she's coming, sitting down, talking to me, saying, didn't happen. Did not happen, wasn't there, didn't make one up, didn't pass one out, wasn't there. I mean, what do I make of it? She's nuts. I'm not a doctor, but even I knew it the day I met her. That was the first encounter I had with her, and the last one, by the way, in, in my face. Did she file a police report against you? Yes, I believe she did, yeah. I filed a police report about the incident at school a couple weeks afterwards because the action that we had been told would be taken hadn't been taken. What was your theory that made you think it would be a criminal matter for the police? What I told him was that my child had been detained. I suppose if I had to put a word on it, I would possibly at the time have said endangerment. Here's what Kelly said about your attempts to have her removed from the school. Let me show you what she said. They attempted to have me removed from the school, removed from any Irvine school, banished completely banished. What else did she and her husband do? Filed lawsuits against me, a restraining order. She told the judge that I tried to kill her um, and that I was stalking her. I mean, they just went on to torture me for a really long time. So you told the court she was try tried to kill you? Well, let's, let's go back to that. She was supposed to have been removed from her position at the after-school company. Right. So I don't think saying that trying to get her thrown out of a school or any Irvine school is an accurate statement. And I do have proof that Kelly was repeatedly showing up in private areas where we lived and then also approaching my son at school. How did she try to kill you? Well, what I was saying was that she had issued these threats. She was consistently showing up in private areas for confrontations. What was your basis for representing to the court as an officer of the court Right. that she was trying to kill you? Well, she was following me. She was coming in private areas. She was approaching our son. She seemed unhinged, and she was issuing threats. And what were the threats? It's been seven years. I'd, you know, I'd have to read it again. I don't like to think about it. But threats against your life? That is how I took them. Did you try to kill her? No. Did you stalk her? No, I did not. Did you show up in private areas and places where she lived to try to confront and threaten her? I don't even know what that means, what's a private area. Well, I guess she means in her neighborhood. No, I never even knew where she lived. I never drove by her house. I wouldn't be bothered with something like that. I just... Did you approach your son at school and try never. to intimidate I mean, him in any I mean, he way? was in the same area as me a few times. He was actually very nice and cordial to me as I was to him. Did you ever threaten this woman's life? Never. Did you ever threaten her family in no. any way? No, never. You a, a, were you a menacing presence in this family in any way whatsoever? No. I didn't even know what her husband looked like. I mean, I'd seen her one time and she was menacing me. All the stuff she said I was doing to her, she was doing to me. And that's well documented. She said you were abusive to her son, that you were threatening to her, that you would stop at nothing to silence her and her son. That was a new restraining order mm -hmm. that she tried to get. And it got thrown out because it's right. a joke. I mean, it's just, it's a joke. And she filed a lawsuit against you, right? Yeah, she does, yes. Uh, did you ever get served? Never. So she just filed it? Nothing ever came of it? I found out from a friend that uh, is an attorney. She started following it. I didn't follow it. I didn't care because I didn't do anything to her or her son, so I just didn't. So know. this went on for how long? I think it was like six months right after she confronted me at after school. Lawsuit after lawsuit, constantly trying to get me taken out of the school. And I, she said something about I was supposed to be removed. I mean, that that's a lie. That never happened. No one ever told her I was going to be removed. What did you think about this when it was happening? What did you say to yourself about this month after month after month? Coming up. Irvine, please. I saw a car driving very erratically into the parking lot of the school. And do you know this person's name? I think her name is Kelly. My car is surrounded by police. He's like, somebody saw you putting drugs in your car. Next Wednesday.
Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. He was a major league pitcher. Now his family says he's a drunk. You've been self-medicating with alcohol because your dream got ripped from you. I'm not a drunkard. This is that bottom of the night, man. You got to do this. That's next Wednesday. Now we turn to a Dr. Phil exclusive. Drugs planted in a PTA mom's car. Kelly claims Jill had a twisted plot to ruin her. And after months of nonstop harassment, it all came to a head. What did you say to yourself about this month after month after month? I cried every day because I had heard that they were like powerful attorneys. And I couldn't understand why she was going after me with such full force. I just was so afraid of her. Did you think you were being followed? Oh, yes. I knew, yes. I knew I was being followed, um, but um, I couldn't prove it. I always thought it was in my head until later I found out that I was being followed. Did you think they, somebody was going to kill you? I always thought I was going to be killed. I live in an apartment that I have to walk down a long hallway, and I used to run to my apartment because I thought she was going to get me. Let's go to the day that you're in school and the police come in. Mm-hmm. Irvine, please. Yes, uh, hi. Uh, I was calling uh, because uh, my daughter's a student at Plaza Vista Elementary School. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm concerned one of the, the parent volunteers there may be uh, under the influence or uh, using drugs. I saw a car driving very erratically. It, it continued on into the into the parking lot of the school. And do you know this person's name? I think her name is Kelly. You're in school, and the police come in. Mm-hmm. What did you think immediately? And I immediately thought that something had happened to my husband. So I literally ran to the front. He said, no, no, calm down, calm down. Somebody had called in and told us that you were driving erratically through the school. And I said, really? I said, it couldn't have been me. I've been here all day. And he said, well, they, they said it was you by name. We started walking out to my car. My car is surrounded by police. I kind of jokingly looked at him and said, is there a dead body in my car or something? And he's like, no, but somebody saw you putting drugs in your car. You know, I thought, well, this is a joke. And I took him to the car, and I could see in the window, big as day, a big giant bag of marijuana, literally sitting on the back seat. Was there any significance to the day that this happened, that specific day? Yes, it was one year exactly to the day that she confronted me on front of the school. What did you do? What happened? I started crying. I was saying the usual, those aren't my drugs, you know. I don't know where they came from. And it got real serious real fast. Actually, my, my knees had buckled when I saw the drugs. They took the drugs out and they put it on top of the cop car. And, um, you know... It's just really... <laughs> and they took out marijuana, and then they took out other bags as well, right? Yeah, they took out... Um, thank you. They took out um, pills. I mean, I literally put my head down and stopped watching after that because I, I didn't want to see any more. Did they do a field sobriety test? Yes. I was crying the whole time, but I begged them to put the drugs away. I was telling them that the drugs aren't mine, but you're going to put an impression in these kids' head, and they're never going to get it out of their head. So they finally put the drugs away, and they took me inside the building, and we walked past my daughter, and she was crying, and they gave me a field sobriety test right there, and everyone was watching. And you passed all of that? Yes. They just detained me for a couple hours, and then they asked me if they could go to my home and search my home, and I said yes. In my head, I kept thinking, I need to start making plans for my daughter because I'm probably going to go to jail. I just kept asking, Mom, am I going to get arrested? And what did they say? They were saying, well, not yet, not now. We're doing some investigating first. One of the police officers asked me, you keep saying that these aren't yours. Did someone plant them in your car? And I said, they must have. I mean, I, I didn't put them there. I had kids in my car this morning, you know? And he said, well, who, do you have any enemies? And I said, I do have an enemy, actually. You know, I started to think. I start, started to dawn on me. I have an enemy, yes. And he said, well, who is it? And I told him, Jill Easter. Coming up. They did find your DNA on the pills. And that is transfer DNA. Does it mean that I touched those items? Transfer or otherwise, how did your DNA get on pills planted in the car of someone you're in a controversy with? 
Drugs planted in a PTA mom's car. A Dr. Phil exclusive continues. The couple plotted to frame Peters by planting drugs in her car. Ken Easter disguised his voice and called police, telling them he saw Peters driving erratically in this elementary school parking lot. Kent and Jill Easter were in constant contact after Kent had made the call to the police as an anonymous parent concerned about Peters' erratic driving. They were texting and contacting each other. They were certainly in cahoots over what was going on. You were accused of planting drugs in this woman's car. Yes. Did you? No. Did you know drugs were being planted in her car? No. You had nothing to do with that? That's right. Did you ever discuss it being done? Did you ever brainstorm about it? No. If, and if you go back, they combed through everything that I ever owned, and they never found any reference to it. But they did find your DNA on the pills. Right, and that is transfer DNA. Does it mean that I touched those items? Transfer or otherwise, how did your DNA get on pills planted in the car of someone you're in a controversy with about your son at school? I mean, isn't that a huge coincidence? Transfer DNA is not the same thing as a direct DNA. I, I know what and transfer I never... DNA is. Okay, great. That DNA originated on your body. That's right, but it doesn't mean that I touched those items. And the DNA from your body got onto those pills that wound up in her car. You agree with that? That's right. And your DNA that originated on your body was on the bag that the pills were in. I don't think it was on the bag. I think it was. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. She's nuts. What's wrong with this woman? I really don't know. I think she's desperate for attention. Is she evil? Oh, for sure. What she did ruined my life. So for her to just sit there and say, I didn't do anything, and to think she's smarter than everybody, you know, to try to talk everyone out of it, it's transfer DNA. Like, we're all stupid, you know? DNA's DNA. That's it's right. She's the stupid one. When they found the fingerprints on the pills, that was an amazing day. That was like a day for celebration. When the, when the investigators called me and told me that, they're... Those guys are geniuses. She needs to own it, man. She got busted. Yeah, well, listen to how she refuses to accept responsibility. Why do you suppose when the cops first confronted Kelly, the first thing she said was, I know who did this, it's Jill Easter? From what I understand from the documentation, the first person investigated was a local drug dealer. She did name some other people after, but the first thing she said was Jill Easter. I'm just reading from the you police were on documents. The I wasn't there. For Why what? Did she put you on the short list, you think? I've actually never read that she did. From what I've read, there were three other people that were investigated beforehand. She blamed you early on enough that you were eventually arrested, right? Yes. Well, we were, it was, it would be, I believe, over a year after that. And you pled guilty to what? It's not a drug charge. It's something like uh, restricting the freedom of another. Meaning that you created a situation, a circumstance, or an environment in which she was detained. That's, yes. Which means you planted the drugs. Okay. Coming up. Your husband was photographed on surveillance cameras going to the business center. A phone call came from the business center. So you specifically saw her place something behind her seat? Yeah, yeah it looked like she, she had some pills or something. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You knew, Jason, how long before the two of you moved in together? Two weeks. He's been found guilty of sexual molestation of a boy and a girl. And you have two boys. That's tomorrow. Schoolyard Setup. A Dr. Phil exclusive continues. Jill's husband, Kent, made a shocking 911 call. He snuck into a hotel, used a fake accent and a fake name to call the police and report that Kelly was at school driving erratically and had drugs in her car. Your husband was photographed on surveillance cameras walking in to this hotel 
going to the business center. The phone call came from the business center inside this hotel. They go to the school and find the drugs with your DNA and his DNA on the pills inside her car. Mm -hmm. Your cell phone and his cell phone both ping on the tower, putting you near her house at 3.47 a.m. the night before this phone call is made to tip them on the drugs. Irvine, please. I saw a car driving very erratically. It, it continued on into the into the parking lot of the school, and it looked like they had put something away in their car and some drugs. It, what? It was Did they? All over the place, and then they went into the school, and I recognized the parent volunteers for the after-school program. So you specifically saw her place something behind her seat? Yeah, yeah it looked like she, she had some pills or something. Okay, what what is your name? My name is uh, Jay. Jay? DJ. DJ. And what's your last name? Uh, Chandra Sekar. How do you spell that? C-H-A-N-D-R-A-S-E-K-H-R. And do you know this person's name? I, I believe, I think, I think her name is Kelly. Is that your husband? I'm not going to contradict anything that he has said. It's well, not me on the phone. Just listening to it, is that your husband? In your opinion, you're not a professional. Okay. At the time, um, I was given a report that identified another man positively. I'm just so, asking as you sit here in this chair now and listen to the man that you've been married to and lived with and talked to on the phone. Here's the thing: is that the reason why I wanted to do this and your husband? not to interrupt you is because I'm not the same person as my husband. Okay, I wasn't with him. That's not you on the phone. I'm not yes. suggesting it so is. So what, what I, what I was hoping you, to do you was, you know, I found a lot of things that are really interesting. I plan on putting them out there, and I want to talk to you about them. I want you to be a part of it. I feel like we're going over some stuff that I wasn't there for. So you don't want to answer whether that's your husband or not? I, I'm just going to go by what he said at trial. I never had the chance to have a trial. So that means you're not going to answer the question? That's right. Okay. So you know he's admitted that that's him? Yes, and I am a separate person from my husband. We can't understand what it is you want to present to me if people don't understand the backstory. They have to understand what happened. This isn't part of my backstory. Well, you're being accused of putting those drugs in that car. I pled guilty to, well, I didn't plead guilty to that. I guess I pled guilty to... And you pled guilty to it? Restricting, well, technically it was restricting uh, movement. Uh, I may not be getting the words exactly precise. Restricting the movement of another. It technically didn't say drugs. I spoke with Orange County District Attorney Tony Rakakis. He believes Jill and Ken Easter hatched a diabolical plan to throw Kelly into jail for doing absolutely nothing. I really wanted to have you here for this because this is one of those stories where law enforcement did such a great job from the investigation level of sniffing out this frame all the way through y'all's prosecution. It's just a great chance to showcase everything. What made this such a powerful case against them? It actually starts with the, uh, with the telephone call. They gave a false name, used a, a kind of an Indian accent on the phone. On the night that those drugs were planted, both of their telephones were being used to, to text each other. She kept saying that the DNA on the pills and the bags was transfer DNA. Oh, it was transferred from, from her to the pills and the bags. I mean, there's no, there's no possible explanation for that, except that she has something to do with putting it in the car. And he ultimately admitted making the call, correct? Yes. So he admitted it, and I guess she says she didn't know he was making the call. Right. That, that's what she says now. She said there were documents and evidence withheld, that there were things used improperly. 
unethical conduct by the police and the district attorney's office and that she was coerced to make statements. Is any of that true? So as you sit here today, your DNA is on the pills and your husband is on camera walking in and making that phone call. You had nothing to do with setting this woman up with the police. Schoolyard Setup, a Dr. Phil exclusive continues. You said there were some things that you wanted to bring out with me so people would understand. There was information out there that would have really helped me. I was purposefully suppressed. And one of those things is long tapes of police officers in which they accidentally left the recording devices on. A police officer telling Kent that there's no evidence on me and that he should blame me and, and let me take the charge so that he can keep his job. He speaks about me um, in a derogatory manner. It's saying that all women are crazy And you have those tapes? I have the tapes. And how did you come by those tapes? They were turned over to Kent's attorney as evidence. OK, so you think that's important for people to know, because the very people investigating the crime were acknowledging there was no evidence against you. All right, what else? OK, um, I do have a written statement that's actually from Kent talking about the distress he suffered when he was told that he would have to get a divorce. All right, what else? You know, I have a string of documents, but they knew that I hadn't issued a threat, yet they allowed testimony to be given about the threat to make me look like a bad person. That you had threatened her. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. They knew it wasn't true, but they allowed that to come into evidence knowing that it was not true. That's right. Is any of that true? None of it. Did she ever produce any evidence of that? No, no, of course not. I think, I think what happens here is that she just doesn't have any way to go. She wants to try to portray herself as innocent, and so she's making these yeah. things up to try to do that. She's indicating everything that was done was, uh, was made up against her, uh, and of course it wasn't. It was all uh, very clear. Well, listen, I really appreciate you weighing in on all this, and kudos to you and your team and the Irvine Police Department for putting all this together. This could have gone the other way, but instead, there were people that really cared about getting this right, being vigilant. Well, thank you for that, and, and uh, there's no question it, it could have gone the other way. It would be a severe injustice for that to happen. So as you sit here today, Despite the fact that your DNA is on the pills and that your husband is on camera walking in and making that phone call, that you had nothing to do with setting this woman up with the police. My husband and I are two different people. I'm just asking about you. And well, that's about him. He has said he made the phone call. You know, every meeting that we had with the attorneys it was never about what actually happened. It was always about strategy. Mm -hmm. And it was to the point where I stopped participating because I didn't feel that what was being done was right. But you're saying you didn't ask him to make that phone call? Absolutely not. You didn't make a plan. You didn't touch those pills. You didn't put them in that car. That's right. You're, you're saying you, you, you were nowhere in that chain of events. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't there when his car was searched. You had to be really shocked when you got arrested. Then. I was shocked, and I was confused. I thank you for talking to me. Thank I'm you. glad you did. Coming up. There's a lot more to this story that people don't know about. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Uh, let me just say I am so sorry that all of this happened to you. Thank you. You sued them civilly. Yes. And did Kent finally admit to planting the drugs? Well, he admitted that I didn't do anything wrong. And he said, no, that was just something that we made up. What was the verdict? I won my civil lawsuit. They awarded uh, 5.7 million. How did that feel? It felt good to be vindicated. It felt good that people believed in awarding emotional damages because, you know, ultimately the emotional 
part of it was what was killing me, you know, and, you know, my husband ended up having a breakdown and he can't work anymore. It's a post-traumatic stress disorder and I have it, my daughter has it, my daughter had to change schools. I lost everything that I worked hard for and the whole thing has just sent us over the edge. There's a lot more to this story that people don't know about. I wrote a book, so I'm hoping that that will be my job now since I can't go out into the workforce yet. I really do recommend that people read this book because I think you have an amazing story of survival, of courage and hanging in there. I want to write a last chapter to your story because, look, you have to take your power back here. That's the thing about bullies. The problem is bullies can stop doing what they're doing, but if you take over where they leave off, and you let the scars continue. If you let them alter your self-worth, your personal truth, your identity, then it's not over. Let me tell you, she tried to take you down, and by God, you're still here. And she went down. She lost her law license, she's lost her marriage, she's lost all credibility. You, on the other hand, survived. You Flip the script. Give yourself credit for that. You stood your ground, and here we are now. They wound up paying the price, not you. You lady are a survivor. You navigated your family through this minefield. Give yourself credit. You are a survivor. I will. Thank you. Both women told a very different story today, but look, here's the bottom line. Parents, we have to stay reasonable. You don't ever want to let a schoolyard or schoolhouse dispute escalate and put you in a position where your children are the ones who end up suffering for our bad judgment or our running our agendas. I hope that both these families are able to put this behind them and move on with their lives. I want to thank Ava Everhart, formerly known as Jill Easter, Kelly Peters, and the Orange County District Attorney, Tony Rakakis for joining me today. Thanks for watching.